Hi, Class 564. Can you believe that we've come to the end of our seven-week journey? I don't know about you, but I have gained tremendous insight on leading conflict resolution and negotiation. I'd like to first start with conflict. Conflict can be defined as a serious disagreement or argument. If I could be honest, prior to this class, I viewed conflict from a negative lens. I viewed conflict as something that was very destructive. I viewed conflict as something that was always full of drama. I have watched personally as a leader, conflicts play out and it has been very damaging to individuals and also to an organization. It's been discouraging to watch and it has also been very disheartening. And to deal with conflict can be a very daunting process. I can tell you during this class what was so profound and what stood out to me, which really speaks true to who I am as a leader, is that I tend to avoid conflict. During the conflict skills assessment test, my strongest areas was that of avoidance and accommodations. For many years as a leader, I avoided conflict because I am non-confrontational and I like to keep the peace. Avoidance can be defined as denying an issue exists by ignoring it. So because I avoided an issue, I compensated by accommodations. Accommodation can be defined as conflict accommodators, which I clearly am, who cares deeply about the feelings of others and we seek to maintain harmony in relationship and our work environment. I can tell you that I am huge on building relationship. I think that it makes a difference. I have found over the years that when people enjoy being around their manager and coworkers, they are less likely to seek out conflict. They'll show up to work on time. They'll give it 110%. So there is something about building relationship, which is why I've always made accommodations. But here is what I've learned. I've learned that conflict is not necessarily a bad thing, but instead that there is value and importance in conflict. When conflict is valued, it encourages an environment where change is seen as positive. In other words, a way of making things better. The value of conflict can be seen as a tool for deeper thinking, better results, and greater communication. With conflict comes great opportunity. It's a great opportunity because it creates growth and change. Best of all, the most effective tool is that when you have dealt with conflict as a leader or as an individual, you know how to process your emotions, you know how to process your feelings, and you can begin to look at it from a greater perspective. So I know that I started off my presentation saying conflict is negative. I've avoided it for many years. And then I said it's a great opportunity. But here's what changed. My perspective has changed on how I view conflict. Prior to this class, I saw conflict from a narrow lens. And so because I viewed conflict from a narrow lens, I only ever got a snapshot. But over these last seven weeks, as I learned and as I read and as I studied, my lens became broader in the sense of conflict. And so no longer do I see a snapshot of conflict, but now I see the whole picture. I love what the late President Ronald Reagan said. He uttered these words, peace is not the absence of conflict, it is the ability to handle conflict by peaceful means. So I can tell you that going forward, now having a better understanding of conflict, my style will most likely consist of compromise and collaboration. Compromise because it is finding a middle ground to reach a solution. It is an attempt to balance the need and collaboration because working together is vital to achieve outcome that meet the needs of others. So every leader should always have strategies when dealing with conflict. So here are some of mine. 
I like to first clarify the source of the conflict, meaning I want to go to the individuals who have the conflict. And I want to make sure that I listen actively to everyone. Conflict is inevitable, but you want to make sure that you listen to the individuals as they share their heart. And then once I listen and have a greater understanding, I now want to investigate the situation. Why? To show fair treatment. And once I've investigated, now I want to determine a goal on how we could work together as a team. How can we build that relationship and create cohesiveness? Once I've established that, then I want to utilize some of the tools in my toolbox, right? Tools that will help me assess workplace conflict. And one of the major tools that I have used in the last few weeks, believe it or not, is that I've learned to stay calm. Why? Because it has helped me to avoid escalation. And if you can remain calm, it causes you to step back and look at the big picture. Also, asking the right questions is vital. It helps you avoid even a greater offense. Lastly, avoid the blame game. Figuring out who fault it is really doesn't matter as much as figuring out a solution. So I've talked to you briefly about conflict. Now let me talk to you briefly about negotiation. Negotiation is defined as a discussion aimed at reaching an agreement. Negotiation is about creativity and not compromise. So here is my takeaway for negotiation. My view of negotiation has changed drastically because I no longer see it as who wins, but now I see it as an opportunity to be able to reach a common goal. I see it as an opportunity to build a post to tear down. I see it as an opportunity where two different companies, individuals can come together to create a common goal for the benefit of everyone. So as I come to a close, here is my conclusion. Perspective matters. Change your view and you can change the outcome. Conflict is necessary and needed. And negotiation is beneficial. In the words of Bugs Bunny, that's all folks. <laughs>